Hello friends, today is the day that I review the Benchmade Bug Out. This is a pretty popular knife, it came out of nowhere. All of a sudden Benchmade had this ultra light sort of little riff on the Griptilian that uh, has a lot less sort of uh, involved in it, much sort of simpler, smaller knife. Um, aimed very much at the ultra light crowd or the very sort of nut and fancy school of everything must weigh very little crowd. So speaking of weighing very little, this one weighs 55 grams today, these scales are a bit um, up and down. Sometimes it's 53, whatever. So it's very, very light. That's like 1.8 ounces or something like that. Um, and yeah, it is a really sort of well-made light knife. So often the little really ultra light knives, say perhaps like my Alma Falcon, um, they're so light often that they sort of suffer a little bit in terms of durability. This one has pin construction and has just gone a bit rickety over time. This one here is made you know, to Benchmade's usual sort of decent build quality. Not fit and finish, uh, uh, although this one was fine, but just the overall, um, if you get one that's got the nice details on it, which this one does seem to be quite a nice example, um, it is sort of very well built little knife. So I'll go over the Benchmade bug out, I'll talk about what I like, I'll talk about what I don't like, I'll just start with the basic specs and some comparisons. So as I said, about 1.8 ounces, 54 grams, you've got a three inch blade, You've got a 3.75-ish inch handle, so overall length of about seven inches. Um, I'll run it up against, so let's look run it up against a normal size Benchmade Griptilian. That should give you some idea. So it's not exactly a tiny knife. Like this is a larger folder, like a mid to large size folder, the standard grip. I feel like it might actually be a little bit bigger than the mini grip. So definitely sort of somewhere in the middle there. Um, let's bring it up next to a, uh, this is a Kaiser Gemini. This is another great EDC knife. This one's a little bit heavier. This one is um, you know, titanium and steel and whatnot. So you're gonna uh, have a bit, you're gonna have a weight cost of 105 grams. So this knife here weighs twice as much, and it doesn't feel like a heavy knife when you carry a Gemini either. So there you go. Um, let's look at the to a giant Benchmade. So this is the Contego. There we go. Big old Contego there. Uh, this is it next to the Native Five. A really another really good competitive yet strong option from um, another sort of good reputable knife. Uh, maker. Uh, this is next to a Rake knife. This is the Rake, uh, some long complicated name, P831SF. This is a pretty light um, Rake knife. Um, this is still stainless steel, but the weight on this one, they managed to get it down um, pretty decently to 92 grams. So that's a pretty light knife for a stainless steel frame lock. I'll review that some other time. Um, and this is it next to my Falcon Even U2 which is a much lighter knife, but obviously a much smaller knife, and my Almar Falcon, which is about the same size, but just a lot more slightly built. So that's your comparisons. Um, this knife here is good. I'll start off with the good things about it. It's got a really good cutting blade. So the blade here is both good for cutting and for slicing. So you can force it through cardboard just fine because it has a nice, let's have a look. It's got a nice kind of robust high saber grind. It's um, good on things like food, so you can cut your apples with it, you can make nice squared off apple slices, so like you won't have the feathering or crumbling of your apple when you cut the apple up, just as nice and sort of kitchen knife-ish on your fruit and things like that. It even cuts blueberries very well. Blueberries. In other news, how disappointing is it that blueberries are like this weird gross yellowish colour inside? Whose idea was that? Blueberries, come on. Um, it also cuts, I got out the old sort of room temperature Colby cheese, which is some of the hardest stuff to cut, and it actually goes through that not too badly. Um, as a comparison, I got out probably one of my best slicing knives, the Spideco Police, and while the Police was a little bit better at cutting the cheese, uh, the Benchmade Bug Out certainly had you know, a good red hot go at it as well, so not too bad at all for slicing and cutting. It's a very handsome blade, nice and neutral shape as well, which is cool. They've gotten sort of... Um, They've added a little swedge here. The spine isn't crowned, but it's not sort of super sharp. It's just really nicely finished in a satin sort of semi-reflective configuration. Really, really well done blade. Generous sharpening troil, and the edge goes all the way to the sharpening troil, which is putting it miles ahead of, um, say, a Gerber knife that I dare not speak its name that I reviewed recently. So yeah, very, very good blade. The overall appearance, I think, is really, really nice too. Very simple design elements, blue handle, blue thumb stud. I think they do runs for certain companies, green color handle, green thumb stud. 
lots of like I'd love to see a full range of these like Spyderco does the Delica I think that'd be really really cool um, so overall it's a really nice design another thing I like that looks really cool I think is the uh, lanyard hole I don't use the lanyard hole but I think that's really cool just integrating into the plastic there yeah it's probably not going to be a load bearing lanyard hole or anything crazy but you know it's a really good look I think really nice looking knife um, so I like the um, you know, I, I like the blade I like the overall appearance um, it's generally kicking goals in terms of being a good design. So I like the design. Another thing I like about it is it has a good implementation of the Benchmade axis lock. It has a little bit of steel around this part just to keep all this sort of contained so it's not just sliding on plastic of course. Um, but yeah, the axis lock is kind of like a smaller variety of it. So I'll bring out my griptilian and zoom in. So um, you see there, zoom in there. Uh, it is... Uh, no, it's actually about the same size. Huh. I was thinking it was about the valet size because it does feel a little bit smaller. I think it's just a little bit submerged. Yeah, it's not sticking out as much. That's what it is. Not as knobbly. It's much more sort of level with the frame. So I guess that's what it is. Anyway, it's a good implementation of the axis lock and you can do all the fun bench made stuff like flip it open, flip it close, <laughs> more or less. And as they break in, they get better at all this sort of stuff as well. So it's a good, a good implementation of the axis lock. Another really good thing is the pocket clip. The pocket clip is a lightweight deep carry clip. So uh, this is a deep carry clip as well. But look, it's about half the size. And really, does a clip need to be this long? I haven't really felt the need for it to be that long. I figure it's, I don't know, I, maybe it's for stability. I have no idea. But this holds it in my pocket just fine. I guess it's a much lighter knife, so it needs much less clip. And it is good for keeping the clip out the way. Um, so it doesn't interfere with ergonomics. Your hand's more or less entirely off the clip. You get a little bit of little bit of, sort of space contact there from that little pinky to palm space, but that's about it. So really well implemented pocket clip too. Absolutely excellent. Uh, what negative is there to say about this knife? You know, there's two main things. The first is gonna be the price. Um, so I guess another good thing is the S30V steel, but the S30V steel isn't exactly super premium anymore. And I guess a good thing, a good way to illustrate this is this knife is about the same price as this knife, which is in titanium and S35VN. And this one is in S30V and like a grivery type plastic material, which isn't a particularly exotic plastic, isn't a particularly strong plastic. It's not a weak plastic by any means, but you know, it isn't like your G10 super, you know, amorphous poly resin kind of stuff. It's just quite a simple plastic. So um, the price is $190 in Australia, and that's about what you get a Kaiser Gemini for. Um, you can even get these down to about $175 from place to place. So, um, and that's like a flipper and it's, got, you know, really good action bearings. Much more complex piece. Yeah, you pay a bit more for US manufacturing. I'm totally fine with that. I think we've all made peace with that. But then conversely, you get this US made Spyderco native, which uh, is about probably, I mean, it ends up being more because I had to pay US shipping. But um, so these are about 80, $86 from Cutlery Shop, which ends up being about 105 US dollars converted. So, you know, uh, for a knife that has better steel and pretty much same if not very similar handle materials the pricing is definitely out there just a little bit so if you are after a strong lightweight knife and you don't have a great deal of cash but you want something good a native even in the s35 vn is probably better bang for your buck than this one here it, just in terms of raw ingredients materials um, so that's one thing. Uh, the next thing is, yeah, the grivery isn't the nicest feeling stuff in the world. It's kind of got that same thing that the original Griptilian handles have, where it just feels really plasticky. And you know what? That's fine, I guess, but this isn't exactly a premium feeling knife. It's well put together in this example, but um, yeah, not super premium um, to say the least in terms of how it feels. It is just a bit like, oh, plastic. So some people made much of the squeeze, don't stress too much about that. It isn't like a squishy, squeezy knife at all. There was a few shots on Instagram running around of the knife being really pinched closed. Don't worry about that. It still feels plenty rigid. I do wonder how it would go if you like accidentally stepped on it or something like that, but I'm not going to test this because this is my buddy's knife. So yeah, just that the two main real things. It's a little bit on the pricey side, which you know may come down, but then remember Benchmade fixes their pricing, which this is a bit of a bummer. And then, um, you know, it's not the most luscious feeling handle material. It's kind of very thin as well, which does go in line with the, the purpose of it. But yeah, this um, G10 here feels a bit more sort of um, wholesome or <laughs> it's really dumb. Um, but this feels a little bit more natural, like my Carterish or something. I always find G10 feels warmer to the touch, just more solid feeling. Uh, I know, it's it's a much of a muchness, but you know, you've got to have something to bring to the, to the thumbs down side, don't you? But overall, it's such a minor thing. 
Um, if you have, you know, if price isn't particularly bothersome to you, I think this is one of the best examples of a lightweight knife you can get. It's really full featured. It's definitely as good as I would say like a Benchmade Reptilian. I, I feel like a basic one. It's actually got better steel, the S30V versus the 154 cm um, if you're after some other good low, uh, low weight knives, yeah, I'd definitely suggest the Native. If you're after something from Benchmade, there's the 530 series as well, which is another sort of very slim knife this way, um, axis locking, sort of same plastic handle. It's just got a more of a spear shaped blade and kind of more of a dagger shape in general. So it might be a bit more of a polarizing design. Um, but other ones, yeah, the Falkniven U2, you get a really awesome super steel, but then you get no um, pocket clip or anything like that. And then of course I had the Almar as well. You can watch my previous video actually actually about, you know, good lightweight pocket knives. But yeah, the Benchmade bug out, I'm really, really happy with it. Um, it's just a good all round EDC user blade. As long as you're not gonna put it into like super harsh, you know, harsh environments, like where you might be doing twisting laterally on it, I wouldn't like to overly test this plastic, maybe twisting from like side to side, things like that, might avoid it. Um, you know, you could probably make a few feather sticks with it, of course, like I mean, people use Swiss Army knives for that and um, they're just on thin metal frames, so you know. I'm sure you can do all those things, but yeah, it's certainly no, um, you know, uh, no Contego, that's for sure, that's full steel liners and, you know, jimping all over it and all that sort of stuff and giant pivot and all that sort of business. So it's, uh, it's definitely not that, but for what it is, I think it does really, really well. So overall, a really positive review for me for the Benchmade Bugger, and I really do recommend it. Thank you very much to my buddy Luke for sending this along for my review. Um, it really is uh, a joy to, to use and carry, so I think I might even um, grab one of these for myself. Anyway guys, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.